big. We in Salvador. So, welcome to this uh, uh, little series, Pattern of the Month, and it's our 16th film. And uh, I'm sitting here now, I should have been somewhere else. It's been a terrible season uh, because of the uh, COVID situation. No Scotland for me, and I couldn't go to Russia, and I'm sitting here with bags packed, waiting for Norway to open up. Uh, and we're uh, quite some uh, uh, time into the salmon season and um, it's been extremely warm uh, actually I should be in tying thunder and lightning because we have 30 degrees and, and thunderstorms and um, it's really warm and a lot of the waters uh, rivers been warming up meaning that you have to change your tactics a bit and uh, what I do I move over to slimmer flies that I fish faster. And I think maybe speed is one of the most ex uh, essential things when water uh, rises up in temperature. And um, today I'm gonna tie a really simple fly. I'm gonna tie uh, the green samurai. And um, maybe it's crazy to wait 15 films before I tie one of the flies that actually gives me most fish. Uh, this is a fly that's designed to fish fast and it's a really slim fly and you actually have to dare to fish it fast enough and to show the fish the side of the fly. And uh, <clears throat> Samurai comes from, it's one of these long winged black flies and it comes from the sunray shadow and I was fortunate enough, I told you before, but fortunate enough to be able to work on Lairdal with Ray Brooks uh, at Ray's place and to meet Ray, the man behind the sunray shadow. And many people uh, look at the sunray in the wrong way, I think. They look at the big, long winged black fly as a fly to fish in the dusk. But the sun rays and also the samurais are tied and designed to fish daytime and to fish extremely fast. And on the Lardal, where you have all these tashkals, all these buildings, where they um, uh, made like stairs in the river, uh, there's a lot of white water and and to fish a big long winged black fly sideways extremely fast through the white water can sometimes especially when conditions are night like now where temperature goes up it can be the most effective and sometimes the only thing that actually really works the green samurai uh you know, it's when I came up with the design, I started by having a fly that didn't have a front tackle. There was only dubbing that created the little drop form that I wanted. I don't like this straight fly. I want it to have a drop form, even if it's not as fat in the front as most of my flies are. Uh, and I fish it most of the time quite big but I also go down and fish them like um, medium size, six, seven, eight centimeter fly. And if I want to tie them really, really small, I can do them. It's not a really small fly, but for being a samurai, it's a small one uh, and extremely sparse with few hair. I can do them with loose, loose bodies. So I start with the extra small and just uh, tie in the wing, a little dubbing, brush out, and very little hackle, like on this one. But today I'm gonna tie you one of the big guys and um, I'm gonna do it uh, the way uh, they I tie them today and the way that I fish them today. So, we're gonna tie on a medium uh, fits, a uh, black one, uh, together with the extra small uh, chartreuse, fluorescent chartreuse one. And start by, by uh, adjusting this tubing in the cutter that will be here soon. And 
Normally when I talk about size, the tubing is half the size of the finished fly. When it comes to the Samurai, we're on about one third. So if I'm gonna tie, even to tie a really big one, I'll don't go bigger than three and a half centimeters on the medium tubing. Cut it with an angle, like before, just to connect the two um, tubes. Little bit of an angle on this one too. Makes it easier to slide on the cone. And uh, make sure that the fluorescent, the, the chartreuse one goes quite far into the black one. And I'm gonna tie with the 12 o thread today. Um, and um, the SSS thread, of course. Make sure it slips uh, good in your bobbin. And uh, since there are a few materials on this one, we're also supplying a spool of, of our thread together with our PM, our pattern of the month packs. And I start by putting on some thread over this part that I cut. This means the medium will hold the extra small, no glue, and uh, our system is flexible. And maybe I should say thank you for all you guys sending supporting uh, messages after the film where I explain the difference between the Fitz tubing and other tubings on the market. Uh, thank you for understanding the whole idea behind the flexible system. So I, I uh, go back down with my thread and like on a lot of my flights I start with a mirage, tie it in underneath. Here I can back down the thread and turn the thread uh, and wind the mirage, but I prefer to do this. I go back with the mirage. So I leave four to six millimeters about uh, for the hook to slip in. One of the good things too with a flexible system like this is that you don't need anything else than the fits tubing to secure your hook. Tie it in and then I'm gonna do a body that um, it's tapered. By the way, I use thicker and thicker materials, but it's a very, very simple body. And I go on to uh, the Gordy Green uh, hollow braid, SSS hollow braid. And of course you can use other colors, actually on on some of them I use the Greenlander green if I want to have a fly that's got a little more uh, sparkle and be a little lighter. But um, the most effective one I think is the one or the one I caught most fish on is this one where I work with the Gordy Green colors. And I tie in the hollow braid underneath and I make sure I cover up the thread and I pull it hard and I build up a body that is actually growing a little bit even if it's only made by tinsel or braid. Do about half of what's left after the after you tied in the tag or the mirage tinsel, like that. Cut it off, tie in underneath, and I don't use any body hackles. There's no uh, <coughs> ribbings. I go straight on to the um, dubbing, and I use our glitz, and you can see why. It's got very long fibers, and on a big fly like this, I want it I want to be able to brush it out really heavily. And uh, this is what builds up the drop form. And I spin it on, never use wax, back down a little bit. So I cover up the thread and I turn and I go front. And it's with this, it's the same as all my dubbing bodies, they need to look overdressed before you um, start brushing because otherwise you will have a body that is too slim. And 
the thing with the uh, samurai design is that I I split the dubbing into two. I will build this up to be fairly heavy, but I will not just save three or four millimeters here to put the wing on to. I will save a little more for some more dubbing. Need a little more here. And it's an easy way to uh, build up a tapering uh, fly, a tapered fly or a drop form fly just to work with this uh, dubbing that's got all these strands, very long strands. The meanest brush on the market and we brush this down and you can see what I want. I want it to be fairly flat on the top so I brush down dubbing brush it out of course and you can see how this brush just picks up the fibers and it leaves me with a body that is not only uh, very shiny or with a lot of sparkle but also very very translucent and I take this and you can see how I have a few that is too long and I can trim this afterwards too but uh, I take away the worst ones already now okay time for an underwing and uh, my uh, first i was going to say first summarize but my first few hundred summarize didn't have a white underwing they only had a black wing on top all of them had a black wing but what i do i uh, now put on a straight haired take away a couple of those straight haired uh, white underwing and it should be fairly long but not too much just to get a little bit of white under the black and those of you who know the original um, Sunrise Shadow knows, knows that it's got uh, also some lighter hair uh, underneath and uh, most of the flies fished by uh, Ray Brooks had a little bit of squirrel underneath okay so this is now the first wing <clears throat> and you know normally what I do I use half the diameter of the uh, tubing to make sure I got a wide fly where the material can work in and out like this from the fish perspective there's going to be a lot of motion but this fly, I want it to be fairly slim. So I put the wing on top like this. I don't pull it down on the sides. Uh, <clears throat> I go on with uh, black wing and I make sure it's fairly fat and uh, well tapered. And uh, there are some of my very good fishing bodies say there's nothing uh, that can be more ex effective than a really sparsely dressed sun ray. But this I do differently. I want to have it fairly fat. But as you can see, there's a, a very good taper in this wing. And I tie it in and I hold it on top of the tubing, pressing my fingers together like this. <coughs> Tie it in, use a lot of thread here. Look, so I cover up most of the white. And to cut this, I take this and I press it up like this. Makes it easier for me when I cut. And I don't have to cut that close. And the reason for that is that I'm gonna cover up all this with, uh, with a lot of dubbing. So here we go. This is uh, the basic shape of the fly and uh, I'm gonna add, like I do almost all the time, I'm gonna add a couple of jungle cocks and um, those of you who've seen my film knows that I talk about it every time, make sure that you do it in a legal way uh, to use jungle cocks with Cytus. Um, I was lucky enough to buy uh, legal jungle cock when it was easier than today 
It's still possible, but it's more difficult than ever, I would say. I formed the feather. I wanted to follow the wing, so I pull it over my think my thumbnail like this. It's a mechanically shaped feather. You know, sometimes if you want to have a, a fly for display or for framing, you can wet material and you can dry it on a flat surface and it will stay that way. But if you do it mechanically like this, it will stay the same. Oop, that was almost too much. They will it stay it will stay the same even when it gets wet or dries up and, and all the time because it's mechanically shaped. And I just pull it over the finger nail and I tie it in and I make sure that the jungle cock is about the same length as the tubing. And tie it in. And again, I don't have to be careful uh, with the thread. Just make sure it sits in the right place. Pull this out. Cut it off, take the other one, do the same, pull a little more careful this time and uh, shape it so I get it to curve this way but also to curve this way so it will follow the wing. Quite long, look from top. If you don't do it in front of a camera, you can turn your vice easier. I don't want to destroy uh, the focus for you guys. That's why I'm careful by touching my vice tying. Doing it like that and um, ready. Turning this wing from the weakest to the strongest part by putting a little drop of glue on here. And again, I don't have to be careful. I don't have any hackle that will suck up the glue. I can just make sure this is very, very strong. And this is poisonous too. You know, you use it too much, you lose your hair. No, but you should be careful not sniff this too much. Okay, so I will keep on with the dubbing and when I do the bigger flies like this I will I will of course do the glitz but but when I'm down to the super small flies I I use our um, our SSS dubbing it's built on a translucent uh, fiber uh, it's not only flash it's got a bit of flash but it's it's very translucent you can get them in the dispenser boxes or the colors you want all our 15 colors but on the big ones, I keep on doing glitz. And uh, now, you think I'm going crazy here, because I'm gonna put on what will look like, maybe look like crazy amount of dubbing here. It's gonna be a big fly, and I really want it to be shaped the way I want. And I, what I do, I put my fingers over the jungle cock and the wing, and then I back down the dubbing. So I back down and cover up everything here. And uh, remember what I said, if you do this, um, uh, so it looks good now, it's gonna be brushed heavy and uh, it will look too little. So it needs to look super overdressed. Pull it back and then go down with the thread. Look at this. Is that enough? Maybe. We'll have a look. Take the meanest brush again and now I cover up the jungle cocks so I don't destroy this by this brush. It's really mean and good brushing this out. And this way what I do, I pull out enough fibers to be able to pull this down, put a couple of turns here and where the dubbing will create the drop form. And even in, on the big fly like this, and it's a, it's a, um, a slim fly, I want, don't want the drop form to be like this. I want the drop form to be quite narrow. Uh, but the dubbing here will do the fly, the drop form, and make it translucent and give it a, quite a bit of sparkle to it. 
Here we go. As I said, first ones I didn't use any um, hackles, but uh, today I do. I put a little bit of uh, soft hackle in front and I do uh, quite long fibers, maybe two or three turns, depending on how fat I want it to be. And uh, use long, quite long fibers. Cut it off, create that little triangle, and the little triangle is what I tie in here. And then I just double this down by pulling one side here, either with your hands or with the plier, and form three fingers, slide in the tube uh, inside the three fingers, pull back, hold back the fibers you, that's on the part of the feather that you tie in. And you do the same again. Three fingers, slide it in, make sure to pull this and to put them close to each other. Two and a half turns, two or three. It is, it's, uh, should be straight and pull down hard. And what happens is that this uh, hackle will help uh, Get, get this fly a little bit more of motion. It's not a fly that where it's important because when you fish it as fast as you should, it doesn't really matter. But it's good to be able to hang this fly or to fish this fly a bit uh, slower too. So, and when you fish it fast, it doesn't matter. But when you fish it slow, it's essential that the hackles will help make this fly look alive okay so <clears throat> it's the cone that decides uh, the form and profile of the fly and what I can do here now I can decide by choosing the size of cone how wide I want this to be and uh, I'm now gonna use an extra small one which would be uh, a good size for this size of fly I would say but I could also use uh, the micro one uh, if I want this to be very very try to show you here if I want this to be very very slim I use the small cone the cone will open up the stream and create the turbulence so it's the cone that decides the profile Put that on, a little bit of glue again. Seems glue doesn't affect the beer, right? Eh? Little bit, put the glue a little bit away from the, uh, from the thread. And what you can do is you can take this and you can turn it down to the hackles, or you can hold the hackles back, take this, pick up some glue before you put it on big fly here so it doesn't really matter and of course you don't need any knots take this pull down the cone tight and take it out of the vise make sure it's tight down and now I have a really big problem here and that is that I didn't find my black green lighter so I will have to tie a green black fly with a red lighter. Means I'm never gonna catch any fish on it. Sorry, I need to cut it first, three to four mil. Have this that I will melt down, hold it up, melt it down, little by little. Make sure it doesn't start to burn. Little more getting warm here and I think I'm losing my lighter. Don't touch it before it really dries up. It takes a few seconds or you will put the tube together. And we, when you do it the way I've done it, where I hold the tube up like this, uh, you're gonna have a really good hole for your, uh, for your leader. Green Samurai. 
and uh, it's a super fly for me. Uh, I've been catching many, many fish with this. Actually, uh, <coughs> if I look in my diary a couple of years, the Green Samurai was taking more fish than my Paragorvas. But it depends on conditions and what you fish, of course, and where you go. Uh, I really like this fly and um, let me give you um, a few of the things that I think is most essential when you tie this. First of all, make sure to have a hair that's absolutely straight and make sure that you taper it so there are few strands here. This will make the fly look fast. Uh, uh, and slim and long. Uh, <clears throat> second thing that you should do, uh, I think you should do is, is make sure the tube is long enough to get your hook not in the center but almost in the center of the fly. Or you will have, even if you fish it cross to current, if you have 10-15 centimeters uh, of um, to, uh, of wing behind the hook, they can miss it. Uh, they never miss the fly, but they might go for what's behind your hook. And uh, <clears throat> another thing that is important is that you also balance these ones, these flies. Fishing with, uh, with the Sam Rays uh, at Lardal with Brooks, I was getting there a few years, uh, we actually had a few fish that were hooked here on the outside and I didn't really understand it to start with but I think it was like this we were fishing long winged flies with the hook hanging down with a fly that wasn't balanced so the hook moved out of the uh, center of the fly and the fish went for the wing and got hooked on the outside so I want you to use, or I, I want to use, uh, a cone to balance. And the cone will also open up and make this fly have the size of, uh, or the profile and the size of, of how wide it is out of your choice, depending on what cone you, you decide to use. Okay, so the Green Samurai, simple fly. And um, I couldn't help, uh, I needed to share this fly with you because it's such an effective fly. And uh, of course we do the same. Uh, this time we have our packs. And thank you again, all of you, for subscribing. Uh, the pattern packs or, or the packs with flies. Uh, the PM, uh, uh, PM and FM, a fly of the month or pattern of the month, uh, uh, small packs. And uh, I have a few things here on my desk, even if we're ready with the tying. Uh, I, I can show you how I do it. I always been doing, here is my, it's an old, it's one of the first wallets I had where I have only summarize. But the thing, what I do now is I do one of these uh, leather wallets. <clears throat> and uh, what you can do with the leather wallets uh, is that you can have different collections of flies. And let's say I have a few spare ones like this, 10, 15, as many as you need into your bag. And then you just rip out the one you don't need with the low water flies or or whatever and you uh, want to carry your samurai so you take your samurai one and put in there and i think actually this this is a pretty handy way of having a bit of luxury to it this the regular ones do the same job but uh, these are fancier okay and uh, last thing I'm going to do uh, in this film now is uh, show you the ready reels. Uh, we are almost sold out now. Uh, and uh, we are sending uh, the reels now to people all over the world. The number two uh, for 150 meters of our own backing, uh, sailor backing, 150 meters uh, of 40 pound backing or the medium size, this is uh, what's called 
Sailor 3 for uh, 200 meters of 60 pound backing. Uh, medium size for, I would say, this you fish on the switch and a, a single handed rod. And uh, the other one you go from a 12.6 up to about 13 or 14 footer. And for the big rods, you do the big reel R number four. And a four will carry 300 meters of 80 pound P sail R backing. And um, I think they're really, really pretty. And uh, fishing them two years now, I'm really happy with the way they've been performing. And uh, now we are uh, just started to get people sending us photos with fish caught on them. And there are so far big smiles. Everybody is super happy with, with this. And uh, next little film I'm going to have in front of me our rod series. Because uh, we will uh, late July, uh, early August uh, launch the Sailor S2 rod series. Uh, I made the Sailor rods, what, 15 years ago. And um, it's time now for uh, uh, our own rod series that turned out very, very good. I'm super happy I don't fish anything else right now. And uh, we do them the same we do with the reels. It's only 100 <coughs> and they are all numbered. And what I think they will be very collectible. And uh, also for those that have booked um, reels, we'll have first refusal on rods with same number, which I think will be even more collectible. Okay, ended up like a little salesman here. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pack this down and uh, we're gonna pray for that the Norwegian politicians. Uh, I don't know what I should say about Norwegian politicians. I don't have much faith in them, the way they treat the wild stocks of, of salmon in Norway and, and the, the way they uh, handle the fish farming industry and also the way they've been handling this pandemic situation. I've been fully vaccinated with two shots for a month, but I still can't go. But let's hope now that in just a couple of days, it looks like it, borders will open and uh, those of us that love Norwegian fishing can go to Norway and catch yourself some great fish, maybe on the Green Samurai. Okay, thank you very much for watching this one. And uh, as I normally say, next month we come back with something totally different. And uh, next month we're gonna do a new pattern that most of you haven't seen tied in a little special way so again thank you and have a great summer of summer fishing